Hey guys, welcome back to Haywire Homestead. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, today we are going to talk about what all I have. This is kind of my livestock first aid um, supply kit, which as you can see there's a lot of stuff here. A good bit of it is mostly for the goats. Um, my horses don't need quite as much stuff unless they have an injury because we're not breeding them. Um, so let me just go over a couple of things for you. And this is just, this, I mean, like I said, this is just my basic kit. Um, you can, there's probably, you can have a little less and I'm sure you can have a whole lot more. A couple things that I have is a big thing of blackstrap molasses. Blackstrap molasses, this is really good for right after or during labor if a mama will mama goat will drink you can add this to their water it gives them good minerals and some sugar um, to help give them energy uh, i also use it when i take my horses on trail rides and we go camping because most of the time the water is different wherever we're going and they're away from home their environment's different and my horses don't always like to drink the water when they're away but if i put a little bit of molasses in it they will and it's also good for them because like it said it's got good minerals and a little bit of sugar in it um apple cider vinegar and the good kind with the mother in it so this is um the unfiltered raw apple cider vinegar that has all that good healthy bacteria i give this to both my horses and my goats about once a week i give them a bucket of water with this in it it's good for the rumen um so we have that we have uh for lice and mites i will dust them periodically with diatomaceous earth but if I actually have an issue, I'll use Vet RX. So it's just a little tiny bottle. It works for the chickens too. Um, and it's good for respiratory. It promotes healthy upper respiratory function. So if you have somebody with a runny nose, especially like chickens, they get a little bit, you can put a little dab of it on their comb. Um, but it also works really good for lice and mites for the goats. Um, Betadine. Betadine, it's great for washing out wounds for any animal. It's also, you want to dip, um, oh no, wait, you know what? This isn't my iodine. Um, I have betadine, I have iodine, and I must have, uh, you know what? It's in my kidding kit. <laughs> so I have betadine for washing out wounds. You add this to a little bit of water, and then you can scrub an area, clean it out with it. Um, for wound care, we also have uh, Vetresin, and then we also have. Um, Corona multi-purpose ointment. This is, stuff is awesome. And it's just for minor sores, tapping skin. Um, I've even put it on the combs of my chicken and my roosters during really cold weather. So we use that. You can pick it up at any tractor supply. Most of this stuff you can pick up at your local feed store tractor supply. Um, I also have a very, tons of gauze and uh, vet wrap and rolled gauze and gauze pads and all of that stuff for any type of injuries. Um, I have a couple different kinds of scissors for cutting bandages. Um, I also have uh, a set of what we call pickups or tweezers for whenever I have to cut sutures. If I need to remove sutures, I, I don't have a suture kit. Some people will do their own stitches. I call my vet. Um, probably if I had the stuff, I could. I do have a background in um, medical. I have a set of hoof nippers uh, for trimming the goat's hooves. Electrolytes. If you've got somebody, if it's uh, you've got somebody that's dehydrated or not drinking really well, you can use mix this up with some water. I have this one, and I have another kind in the barn that I have for the horses. Uh, that I can, I mean, it's multi-species. You can use it for anybody. For um, if they have an upset tummy, we have probiotics that we can mix up and give to them. We also have baking soda. For baking soda that cuts down, um, or you, you can give this to them two ways. You can give it free choice and see if they'll take it. And then you can also um, mix it up and give it to them in a drenching gun. So, drenching gun. This is a drenching gun. This is great. You mix up whatever you need. You put it inside here and it has measurements on the side. And you just slip it into their mouth. And you can see it's bent. So you put it in their mouth, you slide it up to where the edge of their gum or their, the corner of their mouth hits this little bend. So it puts it in the back of their mouth and then you can slowly squirt it in there to make sure that they're getting whatever you need to give them. Whether it be, you know, electrolytes, probiotics, medication, wormer, baking soda with mixed with water. 
um, any of that stuff. Nutra Drench. Nutra Drench is a great thing for animals that are a little bit under the weather. Um, it's also good for mamas when they're kidding. And I also really, really like it. Uh, I start giving it to mine before we go to fair to help give their immune system a little bit of a boost. Let's see, what else do we have? So we're talking a little bit about tummy stuff. With tummy, we also do a tummy tamer um, drench where I will actually mix up ginger and fresh garlic. I just pulse it in my Ninja, um, mix a little bit of molasses with it, a little bit of water and apple cider vinegar, make a little bit of a slurry, and then I use my drenching gun. Um, also, I will sometimes add cayenne or cinnamon to that. Those are all good for the digestion and help settle um, an upset belly if maybe if they... They got into something that you know didn't agree with them um also if you if you have a goat that got into something that's toxic a couple things you can use phillips milk of magnesia or activated charcoal are two great things to have in your kit um i don't have any activated charcoal but i do have the phillips milk of magnesia and it is the name brand um i don't really know if that matters or not uh let's see what else do we have here um, for worming your goats, one, you should do a fecal. Either have your vet do a fecal or learn how to do them yourself. I do have the, um, the slide for ex uh, checking. It's got little lines on it, so you mix up and make your, uh, you know, collect your poop and put it in a, um, a, a solution, which I have a small bottle of the solution my vet gave me. My microscope unfortunately broke so a friend of mine just bought one so her and I share it and she brings it over when I need to do fecals. For worming, um, I'm trying to get away from chemical wormers. I do have um, the ivermectin injectable and I also have the, the um, oral horse warmer that I can give and depending on what one you're giving depends on what dosage you need per weight of the goat. But what I've actually switched to doing is using essential oils. I don't have the Molly. You can use Molly's Herbals or Land of Halava. Um, those are two good herbal dewormers. Uh, Rose from Wholesome Roots uses Molly's, I know. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually warming um, as needed, and I do it for three days, and I'm using essential oils. So what I do is I mix them up inside of a carrier oil, so that would be like a cold, any cold-pressed oil. So... Um, olive oil or coconut oil or something like that and it's uh, let me think it's two drops per 20 pounds of each and I use doTERRA so wild orange oregano and on guard now if I had a pregnant goat that needed to be wormed if if they don't need to be wormed I'm not gonna warm them at all um, for a pregnant goat, but if they do need to be would need to be warmed for some reason during pregnancy I don't use the on guard because it has clove in it and clove can actually cause some issues with pregnancy in goats um, It can also cause um, them to abort so I don't use the on guard on pregnant goats at all uh, but a couple drops of each of these mixed up in an oil use my drenching gun and I do it for three days straight and then I wait a week and I recheck the fecal um, B complex. No, this one's antibiotic. Hang on. Not this one. So I have B complex. B complex um, is good for a couple different things. You can inject it if somebody's kind of feeling a little icky. This helps give them a good boost. It's also, um, you either need B complex or pure thiamine. Uh, if you have a goat that is exhibiting symptoms of polio or listeria, because it is a thiamine deficiency as part of the issue of those two and they're treated pretty close to the same but one of the things that you have to use is either your vitamin b which has the thiamine in it or you need to get pure thiamine from the vet or by prescription um and uh so i mean if i have somebody that's just not really eating real good and just kind of blah i'll go ahead and give them an injection of b complex for a couple of days and um as well as giving uh them usually like some probiotics and other things to support but um buy a big bottle of it because you never know um, let's see here. Antibiotics. I have three different antibiotics currently. I try not to use antibiotics, but I have them in case we need it. Uh, LA 200. Um, I have it because I bought it because I figured, oh, I need an antibiotic on hand. Uh, you can use it. It's not the best for pneumonia and things like that, but it will work. You do not want to use it in pregnant goats. Um, 
it can cause some issues and it really, really burns. So I, I honestly, I don't even use this one anymore, but it, it was what the store had at the time. Um, I have two different kinds of penicillin. Um, one of them is the uh, penicillin G Procaine and the other one is Pen A. Um, the penicillin um, G Procaine is one that you would want to use if you had polio or listeria. It also works okay for pneumonia. Um, the Pen A is good for minor infections as well. Um, there's Thailand 200, which is another one that you can also use. I typically would just call my vet and ask them which one they would recommend for whatever my problem is. And the most common problem you're probably going to see is pneumonia. <laughs> um, with our crazy weather that we've had this year, a lot of people have been having problems with pneumonia due to drastic weather changes as well as um, uh, barber pole, which is a really hard in, um, bug to kill, uh, parasite to kill. And then the other thing has been polio and listeria. We've seen an increase of that in our area, and a big part of that is the really, really wet conditions um, that we've been having. Um, unfortunately, we lost a goat to um, what my vet believes was listeria, but they present pretty similar. So um, other things that we have is dexamethasone. This is an anti-inflammatory. It's a steroid. Um, so you could use it. Uh, it. It's just good to have on hand. Definitely for the polio and listeria. Um, it also can be used uh, for inflammation, if I remember correctly, for, um, you know, after pregnancy, um, after a hard delivery, you could give them a shot of Dex um, for that. And then the other one that we have uh, is um, Banamine. Banamine is used for fevers um, and pain and inflammation. So I have it on hand. If, I, if the fever is really high, that's when I'm going to give it. Normal temperature for a goat is between 102 and 103.5, according to my vet. So um, if I get a vet, you know, a, a goat with a temp of 104, I'm going to give um, a dose of this. And you do need to check your labels for dosing instructions. I also have BOCI. BOCI is um, uh, your, your selenium and vitamin E that's an injectable. This, uh, if your area is deficient in selenium, you definitely want to have some of this on hand. It is prescription, so you have to pick it up from your vet or get your vet to write a prescription. You can get it online from um, a couple of different places that will carry it for you. And it's good. You want to give it to them about um, a pregnant doe. If you have a deficiency in selenium, you would give this to them um, in the 30 days prior to kidding. And then you would also want to... Um, give this to um, the babies a couple days after birth. And we are deficient in selenium in this area. And actually, you know what? I think I need to go give my two pregnant does, it's time to, they, 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 it's time to get them their injections um, of their BOCI. Um, CDT is, uh, oh, and I cannot remember what it means, but it's a vaccine. It's got tetanus in it and clostridium something. I forget the name of the other one. Um, that is the most common vaccine that's typically given to your goats. And um, I give that 30 day, within the 30 days prior to kidding as well as, um, and then the babies get it at two months and then they'll get it again, again at six months. <sighs> Let me think. Uh, CD antitoxin is another good one that to have on hand in case they do ingest something toxic. Um, and that's something that my vet was out of, so I don't have it on hand. Um, but that's another good one to have for your goats. Syringes for giving injections. The most common one is a 20 gauge, about um, three fourths of an inch to an inch. Uh, you don't need a really big one. Most things are injected subcutaneously. So I keep plenty of those on hand. I also bought a bulk pack of syringes um, just in case. And you know what? I think that might actually be it. There's probably something I'm forgetting, but I try to keep most of it together so that way I can just grab and go. Um, but these are just some of the things that I have on hand to help keep my animals healthy or in case of an emergency. Most of the stuff I, I, I don't use very often. Um, you know, the, the essential oils for the worming is probably the most common thing that I use in here and maybe the nutri -Drench. Um but for the most part, everything else is for emergencies. Oh, and how could I not forget the most important thing in the world? Thermometer. Thermometer, 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 okay? 
you want to make sure that you have working thermometers. I have two digital and I have one um, mercury thermometer because the number one thing whenever you need to check your animal, the first thing, one of the first things that I do when I have an animal that's not feeling well, with the exception of the chickens, I don't do this, but for my goats, my dogs, my horses, is I'm going to take their temperature. Um, because if they have a fever, that's going to tell me if there's an infection. That's going to help give me a clue as to, you know, to which direction that I need to go with their care. And it's also going to be something your vet is going to ask you if you feel you need to call the vet and ask for help. And um, the other one is checking the FAMACHA score. Uh, now, I don't have a FAMACHA card. Um, FAMACHA score is checking the uh, lower eyelid color. And there are plenty of videos online showing you how to do that. And that can give you an indication of whether or not your goat has a high parasite load. It's one thing to check. Um, so if I have a goat that's not feeling well, one of the number one things that I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hurry up, I usually do, uh, main things that I do is, okay, what are they doing? What are they doing or not doing that, you know, that, that's making me feel like they're not, are they not eating? Are they not drinking? Um, I'm going to check their FAMACHA score. I'm going to take their temperature and I'm going to observe them to see whether they're peeing or pooping. We have um, one male goat, it's a weather. Um, so, you know, urinary calculi could be something that could be a concern for him. So I want to make sure that he's peeing okay. Do they have diarrhea? You know, is it, or is it just kind of clumpy? Does it, the stool look normal? And then I may go ahead, depending on the FAMACHA score and how they're pooping, then if they've got diarrhea. I need to double, I need to do a fecal. So that way I can check and see if, okay, is it parasites? Is it um, uh, coccidia? You know, that kind of thing. Check and see. Oh, I do also have, and I don't, okay, I don't know where it is right this second. It must be sitting. There's only so much things that'll fit in my carry bin that I keep all of this stuff in. The other thing that I do have is um, I don't use Corid. I use Albon. Um, I have a bottle of Albon um, that I got from my vet to keep on hand in case I have to treat for coccidia. And if I do have a positive coccidia, then I gotta treat everybody, not just the goat that um, tested positive during fecal. Oh, and the other thing is a bolus gun. Mm. Bolus gun is, an, uh, uh, this is used to give pills. Um, it's also used to give your copper boluses, which uh, I don't have the copper bolus stuff here. A friend of mine and I, we, kind of we're, we live pretty close to each other so if she has something then and I have something else we will trade back and forth if we have something that the other person needs to borrow and use it kind of helps us out with the load of keeping supplies on hand um, a copper bolus isn't typically going to be something I would need in an emergency um, that I would be aware of but if you do your copper boluses um, you put it in here and you put it in your mouth and then this little lever pops it so it makes them swallow it um, well, I hope you guys found this really informative. Uh, I'm hoping I didn't forget too much, but that's it for today. Y'all take. Hey guys, just a little quick thing I forgot at the very end is red cell. Um, this you can find at any of your local stores. If you have a goat that is anemic, they're going to need iron. Um, and you can do that one of two ways. One is the red cell. This can be given orally. And then the other one is... Um, injectable pig iron. Now the injectable pig iron does work a little faster. However, there is a risk with that where your um, your animal can have an allergic reaction to it. So you would want to make sure that if you are going to give injectable pig iron that you have epinephrine on hand in case of an allergic reaction that you can inject um, in that emergency. So be, I mean, if, if it's really, really bad, yeah, it would be good to have that. However, I prefer the red cell just because there's less risk, even though it's not going to um, be absorbed quite as quickly. Um, and I just keep a big bottle of it around. Actually, I think the reason why I bought the big bottle was they didn't have the smaller bottle. <laughs> so <laughs> I have plenty of it, but I just realized as I was putting everything away that I had forgotten to mention that I had the red cell. So that's it. Talk